Welcome to Linoleum Knife. We didn't do the theme music this week because people kept complaining that it was too loud and we were too quiet and I don't know how to fix it yet, but when I fix it, we'll have music again. And when he fixes it, we'll also be in not only your left ear, but also your right ear. Well, let's, let's not get crazy ahead no, of ourselves. No, we're going to fix that one, because no one should it, listen to this if it's going to keep okay, on just being in their left ear. I'm going to fix that too, but you know, one thing at a time. It needs to be in both the ears. We're, we're getting there. This is it's a learning process. It's going to be in both your ears, and you are observing it as it happens. You early adopters of linoleum knife. Uh, across the table for me is Dave White, film critic for Movies dot com, and that's Alonzo Duralde, uh, you just... movie line DVD columnist, and uh, uh, other things, oh, and God. the author of the book. One no, the author of the book. Jesus. Have yourself a movie, little Chris. <laughs> You're the worst. You can't have remember you, a damn thing I do. You, you just you, cash my checks. I, I cash my own checks. <laughs> they go all of them go to the same corporation name, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and so uh, he is the author of "Have Yourself a Movie, Little Christmas." That's the most important thing you need to know. It's available in stores about him. now. He's the author of "Have Yourself a Movie, Little Christmas," and he is the MovieLine dot com DVD editor. DVD editor. And every day he's writing something new about some DVD that. You should at least be reading if you're not going to end up watching it anyway, because he's super entertaining and oh, all thanks. that. Thank you. Thanks. That makes up for not remembering anything about your life. I appreciate it. So on this week's episode, we are talking about Harry uh, Potter, Harry Potter, and the King's Speech Tangled. and Tangled. So it's going to be that kind of episode. Fascinating. Yes. Uh, so okay, so Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part One. Not in 3D. Not in 3D. That's is- really the only thing that mattered to me. <laughs> it was not in 3D. I'm sick of 3D. I'm sick of 3D. If you're not Avatar or Piranha 3D and you're not just throwing stuff at me. Or like jackass. Boobs and vomit and stuff, then I'm not interested in what you have to, yeah, give, I'm, give, to give me. I'm not. I don't want to know about it. I'm not super anti 3D, but you got to bring something. None of this classic. I'm not anti 3D for like those old 3D <laughs> movies. Like no, when no. we saw the French line that right, time, right. that was awesome because Jane Russell comes on screen and she shakes her boobs right all over the place, and that's in 3D, and they, that's how they sold the movie. Like they didn't care back then; they weren't pretending it was art. They were like, "Come see Jane Russell's boobs in 3D," and I, people I, totally did. I believe the tagline on the poster was "Jr. in 3D, she'll knock both your eyes out." He's not making that up. Yeah, that's not that's like a that's not a joke. That's a real that really happened. Um, because didn't they have the poster up with that on it? Yeah, no, I, I have it. Egyptian? I have it in my like amazing 3D book. It's yeah. a real thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and and actually the, the the French line in that same series of the Egyptian, we also saw the stewardesses, which was not nearly. You as, saw the stewardesses. Oh, you didn't go with it. I don't, okay. It was probably late at night. That's I don't true. It was, up, it I don't was. stay up late. You're at night right. For movies. I went to see the stewardesses, and it was not nearly as sexy as the French line. So the last midnight, I stayed up for a midnight movie. When was that? When was all this midnight movie I stayed up for? Uh, probably oh, the Human Centipede. Trash Humpers and Human Centipede double feature. Yeah, yeah, you would. I stayed up for that. You would. Well, that was, you got it. That's worth it. <laughs> Take a long nap in the so afternoon we're talking, for that. We're talking about Harry Potter, remember? <laughs> oh, yeah, Harry Potter. Not in 3D. <laughs> But um, but you know, you know what is there to say at this point? You are either down for whatever they want to give you, you in, or you out, or yeah, you don't care. So you know, take your pick. Uh, I'm in. I like these movies. I think they're really entertaining. I read the books and all. Um, my, you know, I think what this movie does well, it does really well. I mean, all the sort of action stuff. And what the, does it do well, Alonzo? Well, you know, the, I think we've really kind of gotten to know and care about these characters over the years, and so it's it's sort of nice to see them kind of you know, coming into full flower as adults and sort of reaching the end of, of this story. It's weird that they all have five o'clock shadows now, though. Well, That's, you know, it's what happens. They were, they were, they were little wizards, yeah, and now they're not they're little They're not going to be anymore. 11 forever, unfortunately. Um, you know, it, it, it's sort of like the whole thing where... Uh, you know, in, in the James Bond movies, you know, you like, there's the here's the scene where he flirts with Money Penny, and here's where Q gives him his gadgets. And so, you know, there's sort of like, there, there's. And here's things, where he has sex with that chick, and then she dies. Exactly. There's there's things in each of these movies that uh, that are just sort of satisfying to get to. Although this one, obviously, like, they're not at Hogwarts, so there's none of that stuff. Um, there's. Hey, here's my question about that. What's that? About it not being at Hogwarts. Yeah. Does it go to Hogwarts in part two? 
Um, it has to, right? Yes, it does. Because here's the thing. They've been marketing this movie with this big, giant billboard everywhere that's got Hogwarts on fire. Okay, that's that's going to be in Deathly Hallows Part 2, I Well, guess. then why is it on the Part 1 poster? <laughs> Beats me. It's not on the poster, it, but there's this big big billboard ads all over the place. It, it tested well Hogwarts with, on fire. It tested well with focus groups. I don't know. I kept waiting for Hogwarts to catch on fire in this one. That's my one complaint, really. No Hogwarts on fire. I was hoping fire. to see Hogwarts on fire. Well... Be patient, July. Right. My my only. That's when he kills Voldemort too. Right? Yeah. Shh. <laughs> what? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> also, James Franco cuts off his arm, and the Titanic <laughs> sunk when it hit that iceberg. Um, my only my only beef with Deathly Hallows was kind of my same beef with the book was that it was like I remember thinking that the book could be a hundred pages shorter if there wasn't so much camping in it, and it's all in the movie. Too. That was my favorite part. Well, the long 40 minute, five, 45 minutes camping sequence. Because it felt like a Claire Denis movie all of a sudden. Sofia Coppola. Oh, yeah. Well, there you go. Claire Denis. You, no, no. The Claire Denis movies are not what you think okay. they are. Okay. We'll have this whole discussion about Claire Denis movies maybe after you've seen one. <laughs> okay. I admit, she is. Films she, are my favorite director. She is, she is one of my lapses of, of, of film keeping up with. I've never I mean, seen all right. It's movie. not the end of the world that you haven't seen any Claire Denis <clears throat> movies. Claire, the name Claire Denis, D E N I S. If you're really into stuff that's awesome, go to Netflix, put her name in it, watch anything that she's made. They're astounding movies. And she's been making movies since what, the 90s, I guess? Yeah. Late 80s, I think. Late 80s? Wasn't well, like Chocolat or. Mm, or I'm thinking early 90s. Did, who's, I could be wrong. About did she that. do? Is she thirty six fillet or chocolat? One of those two or the chocolat? Either? Not the crappy one. Not the bad chocolat. The Not good the chocolat. bad one with Johnny Depp and Juliette yeah, Binoche. No, the good chocolat. The that good one. The good yeah. chocolat. I think was like eighty nine. Well, uh, whenever it was, she's been making movies for the past twenty years or yeah. so, and um, she's fantastic. And she's one of my favorite directors. And the middle of Harry Potter is nothing like any film it's by right. her. It is but like a, really it is like a like Sophia, Sophia Coppola, Coppola movie. movie where like it's. They just sort of Sophia Coppola plops down a forty-five minute short film in the middle of the Harry it's Potter movie. Longer because it's like everyone's the teenage torpor, you know, <laughs> like they're sitting around in the woods talking Cold. and looking sad and having squabbles and slow dancing to Nick Cave songs, and uh, which was not in the book apparently, but is in the movie. And um, you know, it's it's nice. It's this nice sort of like. Let's all stop and breathe because they've been getting chased and chased and chased by every bad kind of person for the past six movies, six movies of chasing and spells and stuff. It was time that they sat down and had a chat in the woods and the woods are great too because it's all, you know, wintry forest, black metal woods and trees, (laughs) you know. This is good. I, 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 that's my favorite. The, the most boringest part of the entire movie is my favorite part. Of course, because that's. Because you always have to be the troublemaker. I'm not a troublemaker. I just like people to calm down and take their time and, and you know, explore okay. that side of teenage life, which is about 80% of the time about being bored. Well, yeah, fine. And you know what? If I'm watching The Virgin Suicides or The Scent of Green Papaya, I'm totally fine with the movie taking it slow and, and doing that stuff. But I, this is Harry Potter. I want... You want more chasing. I want more spell casting and I want... Yes. I liked... I liked things the, need to be happening. I liked the relaxing camping trip. I liked thinking about how do you stay warm in that tent? <laughs> You know, they've got these magic. Little, little scarves on and stuff. Do they have magic? I'm sure. Warm spaces? Probably. Little magic yeah, yeah. space heaters, you know. We're being silly now. I, You know, I really, I, frankly, I would have enjoyed the torpor more had Maggie Smith been in them. I, I think more Maggie You're Smith. You're not going to get been, that with her. Awesome. She's not going to. She wasn't even in this movie at all, was she? No. She'll she be in the next one. She'll be in the next one. Yeah. Yeah. That was a, that, that's a problem. When you don't have Maggie Smith in your movie, that's a problem. Yeah. And you've already killed uh, uh, Michael Gambon. That's a problem with the King's speech, too. No Maggie Smith? No Maggie Smith. That's true. So she should have been something. Shall we segue to the King's speech? I just did. Nice. Uh, so, yes, yeah, so the King's speech is uh, British Oscar bait. And uh, if you want a handy field guide, uh, incidentally, on, yes. on spotting I just, a British yes. Oscar bait, uh, go to msnbc.com and read Dave White's piece. If you can't find it easily... Um, you won't put, find it easily. Just, I mean... Uh, you, you might. I right. mean, like it's it, it should be in the on the entertainment page. Page, yeah. But you uh, can just put pip pip cheerio into the search in, engine. Seriously, <laughs> type in pip pip cheerio. I did not 
create that title. That was not the title I submitted. But, but it's my, catchy. I know. It is catchy, and it's it's goofy, and my editor knows what she's doing. So, uh, and I admire that about her. <laughs> and so, because I would title things, I would title things ridiculous things that no one would find, and there would be no keyword right. that you'd be able to, like, you know, nothing, Goog- nothing trending Google on friendly, Google. Yeah. yeah. And so... She takes my titles and, and makes them, and she jazzes them up for folks. So, but I wrote this piece for MSNBC about all the movies that are from England that wind up getting nominated for Oscars, like how you can spot them and what they've got in them, like people, tweed. people on big estates and cozy things like cups of tea and people dressed in tweed and 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 and, and fox hunting, cliche <laughs> as it might be. These really are the things that you see <laughs> in the British Oscar films. You don't see. Fish Tank being nominated for yeah. Oscars. Harry Brown not going to be well, a Harry contender. Is a, is a goofy exploitation. But Michael Caine's really good in it. It doesn't matter. Harry Brown Michael is not. Michael Caine no one is, is taking, really good in it. No one is going to take Harry Brown seriously for All anything. Right. Not even a Michael Caine performance. That was a crazy Death Wish exploitation movie. I had a good time watching it. It was real fun. But it, it's all about bloodshed. Well, but you know what? So was Gran Torino. <laughs> Uh, there was something deeper going on uh, in Grand okay. Because that was Clint Because he learns to love Asians. It was Clint Eastwood. <laughs> the Hamon. Um, don't, uh, don't mess with Clint Eastwood until you see Hereafter. <laughs> <laughs> Which, okay, I had That's to tell, wacky. I had Hereafter is wacky. I, I know to, we're digressing. I have to tell – yeah, this is a lot of digressing this episode. I have to tell this story. Dave White calls me from the press screening of Hereafter and says, okay, late in the run of this movie when, like, no one's in the theater – we got to go and we'll make sure not to sit anybody near anybody because holy shit, you have to see how insane this movie is. It's pretty wacky. And so There's I can't the, wait. It, it's meant to be this, I guess, serious, serious meditation on the afterlife and what happens when you die and mortality and all that stuff. And it's seriously, it's grandpa telling you a story about heaven <laughs> and then giving you a bag of Werther's originals. That's this whole movie. <laughs> But we're not talking about that. We're talking about King's speech. King's speech. Tell them what it's about. Uh, Okay, so Colin Firth stars as uh, the man who would eventually become King George VI. And basically, it's about how he has to learn to cure his stammer so that he can give radio speeches and inspire the British people at the beginning of World War II. Because they've run out of stories to tell. Yes. They, the, the movies they've told all the stories about royalty that there yeah. are to tell, so now they've got to the ones about the, the ones, the impediments. people who have speech impediments. Yes. And uh, so his wife, who would later be the Queen Mum, who's played by uh, Helen, Helen Bonham, Bonham Carter, Carter uh, takes him to an unconventional Australian speech therapist played by Jeffrey Rush. Jeffrey Rush. And, you know... When I was in college and I took, you know, one of those sort of world drama courses or whatever, you sort of learn the history of theater, you know, they, they tell you there's a concept of the well-made play. Right. Which is like, you know, it's satisfying and it, you know, it, it it's, you know, well assembled, but it doesn't really add up to much. It's not art. It's just a, you know, it's, an, it's a satisfying night of theater. The well-made play. This for me is a well-made movie. Like, it's fine. I can't fault it. It's just. No big deal. They were very nice. They Here's why I like movies like this. I mean, I wouldn't say this is a great movie, but what I would say is that I super enjoy movies like this because it gives me a version of the royal family that I know never existed in real life. Like, they're cuter. They say witty things in a sort of bemused <laughs> sort of way, you know, and – they they don't look like inbred toffs. They attract. They are attractive, and that's what you want them to be. You don't want to really think about what they are, which is you know this family that doesn't do much except be diplomats. Yeah, and the face of you know good causes. Right, and and then they and for that job they get paid a super crazy amount of money and they get to live in fancy castles and that's. Not a lot of work for the rep for the pay. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say they they, so they they spend a lot of time hanging out. Their take home is pretty. And so uh, you, and plus they're not a, they're not an attractive people. Not, at least until Diana came along, she gave them some good genes to oh, spice up that. That they needed that DNA <laughs> desperately. The um, this movie is 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 fine, and it's. And it's the kind of film that you would take your mom to see and she gets all, you know, warm feeling inside. And then there's the speech at the end of the, when they're about to hit World War II. Right. It's that last moment of innocence. Yes. Before World War II. And they had to become a brave people and to 
they had to keep calm and carry on after that. It's funny. I was, I was telling I was telling Dave that the that's like this famous historic speech. But the first time I ever actually heard it delivered was in Hope and Glory. <laughs> They're all sitting around the radio and listening to the king give right. a speech about World War Two, which is a much better movie, by the way. If you right. haven't seen yeah, Hope and Hope Glory, Glory is really pretty go cool. see that one. My, here's here's the thing about the king's speech for me. It's ordinary people. I don't I don't get what you're talking it, about. It, it, because it is a movie about a guy who um, is. Uh, mistreated by his parents and thus uh, uh, re- and reacts to that in sort of a psychological way because this movie blames the whole stammer on um, who was George the Sixth's father, uh, King George. George, no, no, George yes. the George the Fifth was the crazy one, wasn't it? Or was that George the Third? If my memory serves me correctly from watching this movie, there was a King George. George V. And then okay. he was King George VI. And Okay, so George V apparently like preferred the older son, who's Edward, who wound up abdicating so he could marry Mrs. Simpson, yada, yada, yada. Um, and so that's why Bertie, you know, is this, is he, George VI is known, has the stammer. And so the whole movie is about basically the psychiatrist teaching him to love himself and, you know, get over his Find stuff. Find your voice. Yeah, exactly. Literally. So it's, 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 it's like, totally. That's a line of dialogue toward the end. And King uh, Colin Firth is like, I have a voice. And, yeah. and Jeffrey Rush goes, yes, you do. It, so yeah, so basically, it's like it's it's ordinary people and it's goodwill hunting. It's sort of like the magical therapist movie. So, well, but but but, here's but what done I up heard. in pearls. I, re- and I went and read about this after the fact, after mm-hmm. seeing the movie. And apparently, uh, apparently, Dad liked Bertie, uh-huh. the Colin Firth. He, apparently, Dad liked him better anyway. Oh, uh, Okay, like the what I read was that he was in real life thinking that 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 Edward was just kind of a do nothing and was not king material oh. even though he was first in line and that he was hoping somehow that Edward would go off and and just never marry or you know be you know die young, or whatever, <laughs> die young. So that so this is like to so che- that so that George the sixth could could ascend okay so this is like screenwriter cheap Freudian sort of That's shortcut what then. I hear Okay, so this has well, all. Again, the, I don't care. So this has like, all the historical validity I'm of the sure other Queen Boleyn Elizabeth girl. II is. I'm sure Queen Elizabeth. Uh, QE2. 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 I'm sure there's. She's probably, not Helen Mirren. I'm sure there's not much that's really nice about her in real life. Just a guess. Yeah. Like I've never met her or anything. But she doesn't like, exude a lot of warmth. Yeah. Uh, but you know what? You see the Queen and Helen Mirren is there and, and she's got her little hot water bottle in bed with her and her husband's calling her his little pudding. And, and you're thinking. She's adorable. <laughs> I love that queen. She's my grandma. She's my grandma. And so that's, you know, you want, I, I want them to lie to me, completely lie to me all the time. I'm never going to meet these people. I got no dog in their hunt. I don't live in England. You know, I don't have to. And they have any, literal dogs. In I their don't hunt. have to pay any taxes to <laughs> prop up that monarchy. Make movies where they are as cute as they can be. I'm satisfied. And the uh, uh, and I forgot what you were saying just now. I made the joke that I said that this movie has all the historical validity of the other Boleyn. Oh right, I knew it was something you said. That was funny. <laughs> other Boleyn girl, which is a crazy, oh, crazy movie man. and a terrible movie. But yeah, one that you need to see. Cause I never like, saw the Tudors, but I got. If you've my ever seen old episodes of like Dynasty or Flamingo Road, <laughs> that's the other Boleyn girl. Like, there's really a scene in this movie where. I think the Queen of Spain, who's about to be beheaded or something. I, I don't even remember. But, like, uh, Natalie Portman and Scarlett Johansson sort of heave past her. And, and she's like, their oh, look, way. the Boleyn whores. <laughs> and that's just one moment in this movie full of people's bodices being ripped. Yeah. And, and the humping. And, again, super attractive royalty <laughs> that never existed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and speaking of um, princesses, uh, <laughs> okay, that wasn't as good a People segue as yours. Think that we actually sit around planning segues. No, I think it would, obviously we didn't plan that one because it was terrible. Uh, our, our final film this week is Tangled, the Tangled. Uh, the fiftieth um, animated motion picture. Uh, and if you see it, you from thought, Disney. If you see it, you'll think, why didn't they have a better one? Than yeah, the 50th they movie? didn't really bring out the big guns on this one. It's you know. It's Rapunzel, basically. Uh, you know the story. Um, 
She has really long hair. Yes. She's trapped in a tower. Yes. By a witch who oh, is also oh. her mom or something. I mean, like, I don't In the original story? I don't know. I don't know about the original. In this one, she's trapped by a witch because there is this flower that endows, like, a, a permanent it use. her magic glow-in-the-dark hair. Exactly. And, and the witch had been using it to stay young, but then they pick the flower to save the life of Rapunzel's mother when she's giving birth. And so I guess all the flower goodness passed into Rapunzel herself, so the... Queen the hair. The, the witch has to keep her and the hair to remain young, and so she's in the tower. Right. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. And then the thief guy comes along, and he's the one you see in the trailer because they've recut the trailer, and or rather they made the trailer and retitled the film yes. to attract boy Boys. audiences. Because the princess and the frog didn't do like – it insane didn't even make like $100 million. box office. Right, yeah, exactly. They, they require them somehow to make at least – 150, 200 to be yeah. considered successful. Well, yeah, because right? you have to you have to make like one and a half times your budget, and of course Disney does not go light on the prints and advertising for their movies. So that's a whole right. other thing. Anyway, so yeah, so they 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 came to the conclusion that boys did not want to see a movie with princess in the title, um, and that boys don't want to see girl movies, but the girls will go see boy movies. So, so trick them. Yes, uh, and boys care about hair care apparently. So they made this movie and they called it Tangled instead of Rapunzel, and. Um, you know, I honestly don't remember large chunks of it. Like I like the horse within and an I hour. Like the lizard, the horse, and the chameleon were the best characters, and they don't talk. Chameleon. They're like the best, some of the best Disney nonverbal animals. They give great face. To yes, the whole movie totally. Um, but yeah, but the story is just kind of like it takes forever to get going. Like the first act is unbearably just get on with it. You Once know? stuff starts happening and the action really kicks in about halfway through, it picks up. Then you're all, then you're you're more on board. But boy, it takes a while to get that yeah. going. And you you know you by the end you're rooting for them. You want the happy ending to happen and for the bad people to be punished and stuff. But it's no Into the Woods. I'll tell you that much. I saw Into the Woods. You saw Into the Woods Junior. I saw a middle school production. Yeah, of Into the that Woods. doesn't count. <laughs> one of our <laughs> friends, one of our friends' daughters was in a middle school production of Into the Woods, and I went to see it. Which is basically act, as close as I get to stage musicals. Most it, of the time. It's it's Act One of Into the Woods, and children will listen. Basically, <laughs> what children will that was a That's song, a song right? yeah. And then but there's a whole second. Is act. that in the part two? Yes. Is that in the second half? Yes. Because I think Into the Woods Junior is just the first half of the real That's, that's what I just said. Oh, you just said It's that. act one. I was and thinking about dogs. children will listen. Yes. I okay. The, so you the should minute see, you start talking about stage musicals, I begin you should thinking see, about donuts. You should see the whole thing sometime. It's real good. I was happy with what I saw. No. It was just the right length. But there's more. And there's the a lot more. The and funny thing is, the, the, nice. the first time I was, watched- Kate was the witch, right? Uh, yes. Our friend's daughter's named Kate, and yes. she's the witch. The, the first time I saw Into the Woods, on, I saw it on video, because PBS did like the original Bernadette Peters I version. I about this story. No, this is a funny story. All right. I, I stopped watching after Act 1, thinking that I had seen the whole thing, because there's a Why? happy ever after at the end of Act 1. And then all of Act 2 is was what happened. Was this on a VHS tape? Yes. Did you just pull the tape out and notice that there was still half the tape left? Well, was it, was, it, it wasn't like a commercial tape. Like somebody had taped it for me, so I didn't know what speed oh, they had taped that or whatever. So, I, you know, and so then there's a, there's a whole Act 2 that is when what does happens. When the story get funny? After, oh, God. I'm just saying that for a long time <laughs> I was as stupid as you and thought that the first half of the play was the whole thing. <laughs> but then I learned better that it was not, and you need to learn better also. <laughs> Also, you need to shut up. I'm not listening. Yeah. This children is not listening to you. No, this child, <laughs> this child is not. So, yeah, so, so Tangled. Is there an embargo on this? Tangled? No, we can talk about it. We can talk about it? Yeah. The embargo means that we are forbidden. That we're forbidden to talk about it, tweet about it, Facebook about it. Yeah. And most importantly, review write, it. <laughs> write a review about it um, until the day it's released. Like, yeah. that's the new publicist definition of the word embargo. Yeah. Like, you can't. It's not like the UN in definition, right? You know, where you can't send. Nor, and to usually, just send an email to us. That it's just yeah. like you reviews embargoed until opening. Day. Although recently, yeah. uh, Dave and I both had to yes. sign a paper. <laughs> we had to each of us sign our own individual um, promise document. Not, promise not to tell document. About a movie that we recently saw. Yes, the, that opens on the twenty fourth. So next week on the Nola, we're going to talk podcast, about that movie. Oh my god, are we going to talk about that movie? Because we found out about ten minutes in why they made us sign that paper. <laughs> yeah, they should have made us sign the paper that said like you'll never ever we'll talk never about discuss this, movie. this movie ever again. Don't ever review it because ooh, wow. they knew what they had in their hands. That's what the paper. That's, yeah. that paper was like. Yeah. How do we control this? Mm -hmm. And because I can't imagine. A single person having a good time watching this thing. I, no. no. It's, it of is any, an of abomination. Any age. This, yeah. 
I mean, I, we just narrowed it down. It opens this week, yes. so that people can just guess, yes, to themselves privately. Yes, but you'll know next week. You'll know when next you, week when you when come we, back when for we do our next episode. Again, yeah, because whew, it's I, I passed him a note in the middle of it, and all I wrote on the note was "Please kill me." <laughs> and it's not even the kind of movie that's bad, and you're like, "Wow, this is so great!" I mean, this bad movie sucks so hard that. I can't wait to tell everyone about how sucky it is so that they can all go see it. This is bad, like where you feel your soul draining out this of the basic response. This just hurts. This one just hurts. It's not yeah. like, I mean, curiosity seekers are going to go, wow, I can't. I got to go. I got to watch this. Yeah. But when you do, just, you know, wait till cable. Don't pay yeah, money. No, no. Just satisfy your curiosity later when yeah. it hits cable. But you'll find out which one it is later when we talk about it again. And shockingly, we're coming up on. Our half hour mark. Are we? Yes. We're done. All of our digressions. So we can um, we'll plug your thing. Yes. Uh, and then we got to give, we have to say hello to somebody. Yes, we do. We do. But first, um, just a yeah, reminder, as Dave mentioned at the top of the show, uh, my new book, uh, Have Yourself a Movie Little Christmas, is now available at uh, stores and internet bookstores everywhere. Um, if and you, you're going to be on a book tour. And I am. If you are on Facebook, um, if you should go to the page for Have Yourself a Movie Little Christmas, click like. That would be nice. Or but, go to the page of Alonzo Duralde, A-L-O-N-S-O. That's Alonzo with an S, Duralde, D-U-R-A-L-D-E. Right. But Friend for, him. You will never find me. You'll find me through via him. Via me, on, yes. Yeah, but like there's too, too many days. Anyway, if you go to the Have Yourself a Movie Little Christmas Facebook page, you will see a list of all of my tour dates. So um, if you are... Are in Seattle, Austin, New York, Nashville, San Francisco, Los Angeles, uh, Dallas, Someone's Atlanta, on our door. Dallas, Atlanta, or San Diego, um, or no, have friends that live there. Um, check it out. I will be coming to those cities soon. And um, oh, look, it's our neighbor. Okay, so anyway, thank you for joining us this oh, time. Yeah, oh, right, sorry. Yes, we have to say hello Curtis to Curtis Hill because when we were we talking met, about we were talking about hills, hills last the other week two weeks ago, he's like, we forgot I'm to Hill mention too, him. And you didn't say my name. Yeah, so, so. Curtis, Hill, hey, you, Curtis Hill, you rock. We love you. Uh, you can always drop us a line at linoleumpodcast at gmail.com. We'd love to hear your thoughts. Uh, thanks for listening, and we'll catch you next time. <laughs>